I don't know, it's, it's weird, like when I'm with you now, it, it doesn't feel awkward because it's like your philosophy and everything, it just feels like I've known you for a while and like just listening to your voice when I listen, like um, I listen to your, like uh, a lot of your videos and stuff like that, so it's like, I don't know, it's like a comforting voice like that I've already listened to and it's like listening to you on my headphones right now. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I don't know, I, I appreciate you saying that. Hopefully it is my, it is my prayer that we're able to, to tap into something today that will be very fruitful for you going forward. But not just you, also me, believe it or not, because this is a big opportunity for me to also learn. A lot of times when you're sharing something with someone, as we are sharing something today, um, there's an opportunity to give, but there's also an opportunity to receive. Carnivore, the world's number one selling beef protein, gives you the power of beef at the speed of whey. Carnivore is now available in the original pure beef protein powder and a new delicious RTD. Also try Carnivore Mass, delicious Carnivore Bars, and new soft-baked Carnivore Brownies. To purchase Carnivore Beef Protein Bodybuilding Supplements, go to MuscleMedsRx.com right now. There's a wisdom that says that uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And that is a phenomenon that I think occurs all across the board in every facet of your life. The day has finally come for the winner of the 2014 Train with Kai Green contest, Stephen Wong, to meet Kai here at Bev Francis Gym in Syosset for their workout. Stephen has given Kai the choice of whatever body part he wants to train. Today he has chosen back and shoulders, but first there is always the warm-up for both mind and body. You know, when you're open, or when you allow yourself to be open and available, um, there are lessons that everything can be turned into for your own advancement, you know, if you're willing to be ready and to take it in. So as we begin this thing, I'm thinking to myself, quietly, I am ready. You know, I am ready for the lesson and I'm ready to be what vehicle the universe will allow me to be that will be of some help to hopefully you as you are making your way. Um, and some of the things that I'm able, that I may have experienced that I may be able to share with you, hopefully it will be of good fruit and you'll be able to use them, you know, going forward. But I'm here to take some stuff from you too, so don't be, <laughs> don't be stingy. <laughs> No, I completely agree with everything you said because like, it's not like when you started bodybuilding, you're like, oh, I'm gonna inspire these people doing this and that. You know, um, when you started, you just did what you had to do and then what you did just manifested itself and you know, allowed that to inspire others. And that's how actually I got into bodybuilding was, I was very anorexic when I was younger. And then I realized that if I don't change what I have to do, I'm going to end up killing myself. In middle school, um, I was always so, con I was a very shy kid. So I was always concerned what other people thought of me. Throughout the years, I started to gain a little weight through all the fast food and all this and that. And then, uh, and then people started to make fun of like, you know, I started to jolly with my weight a bit, but I, I kind of took it to heart. That's when I realized, you know, I want to make a difference. And when I did, but it was in such a negative way, I started cutting out all food. I would eat just enough, like just like a couple of bites so that I could still survive and I would constantly drop in weight. To me, I, th I thought like I was still overweight when I looked deathly skinny. When I, was, when I was 13, I was probably like 75 pounds and I thought that was still overweight. I realized that when I really found my faith in God, um, there was that question that I once heard, you know, does Jesus have sin? And a lot of people say, no, he doesn't. You know, it's because he's perfect, this and that. But then I heard, yes, he does because he has my sins. And to me, that was so powerful that, um, you know, I really learned that I was perfect inside because of him. And I, that's when I learned to really appreciate the beauty and, you know, 
that and really learn to respect myself after that and that's what really helped change my life around. I felt like bodybuilding was a way for me to connect my mind and my body. But then the missionary work, it allowed me to connect to my spirit more in a way. Like I guess doing God's work. Uh, we can shake our fists at God and say, why, why, how can you do this? You know, how can you bring so much pain in this world, so much poverty? But, you know, he said, I created you. You're, you're the reason why you're here. You, know, you can make the difference. And when I realized that, I applied that. And so I wanted to do more of his work to give back. Well said, Mr. Wong. That's what's up. You are walking tutorial, testimonial. <laughs> I commend you on coming as far as you have. You seem to be such a young guy. How old are you? 24. 24. I saw my baby face, so I look a lot younger. Hey. <laughs> what I want to do is acknowledge what you just said, but at the same time, I want to point you in the direction of what's going on. I see you t tilting while you're walking, and I want you to take a second. We're going to stop for a minute, and we're going to try to become conscious of our body. I want you to plant your foot on what looks like can be Hmm. Let's say a 60 degree angle, but look at what's happening. I take this step, I divide it in half, and on each side of this half, I'm trying to take my foot and put my toe in the corner of it without necessarily putting my toe literally in the corner. But I'm using that corner as a set point to guide the placement of my overall foot. With each step, I'm trying to drive my heel or the sole of my foot through this through this step mill. I want to just point your attention to this. So you lock yourself in place. And even though it looks like, oh, he's just on the step mill, you're able to turn around and still correctly utilize this thing, this device, this tool to still help me get where I'm trying to go. You just talked about being able to stay focused. You went to this country. Pakistan? Uh, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Now, this is a place that I've heard of only on NPR. <laughs> but I say this to say um, that while we're talking about that, and while it may look like our thoughts are wandering, where my mind is, is still being in command of these mechanics. And these are fundamental things that help you while dealing with, as you talked about, the life that happens, the things that can happen that can distract you, yep. derail your train, take you off. Even as we are here in this moment, you, what you're doing is a walking example, a demonstration again of focus. When I drive my heel into the, into the floor as I am, I'm able to activate or call online more of my hamstring. Ultimately, what does that mean? Well, it makes me more efficient when I do other movements later on to stabilize my knee, protect my knee from injury. It makes me more efficient with being able to recruit my hamstring, protecting my lower back. It makes me more likely to move more efficiently when it comes to doing other things that ultimately show themselves when I get on stage as a bodybuilder. But bodybuilding, to go back to what you just talked about, is only a very small, small piece of the spirit's expression of itself. Bodybuilding is really just a piece of this puzzle. It becomes like a, a tool, not only for expression, but also a tool for self-mastery. I think that's what this thing is at its root. It's not just how big your arms are or how big my chest can be. Granted, by tapping into the understanding and the correct application of self-mastery, being able to tap into what I desire and focus my thinking on the desired end result, I can do the things that you said, as you said, um, how far, how much are you willing to do? How far are you willing to go? Well, I'm able to use my concentrated thinking to develop my physique. So with enough effort and time, ultimately in right work, I'm able to show a body that is a product of, you know, uh, the, the appropriate thinking and effort. However, it is just a small, a very small part of the larger you, you know, and the larger we or the larger I. It's funny because some people may think that these things are separate. They're separate and different. 
but they're not. What I'm able to do with my body is a product of my thinking. And I know you understand that. You know, that is the bedrock to developing all these more sophisticated things. Yep. Or people would think what people would think are more sophisticated things, concepts. So it's a very basic concept. You know, oh I don't know how to eat. It's about my eating. It's not about your eating. Oh, I don't know how to train. It's, it's not about my training. It's not about your training. Training, eating, all of those things are the product yep. of a way of thinking. The, the strength in that thinking starts with the I can do. I can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do. Whether you substitute the word or name, whether you call it this or that, yep. you know, the, the point of reference, the wellspring, is still the same, you know, recognizing the I. Yep. Some people think I am just this body that is either 17 inch arms or 22 inch arms. No, yeah. no, there's more, yeah. you know, <laughs> the explanation is a lot deeper than that. But the more, even the people that think that, oh, I'm oblivious to that. That stuff doesn't mean anything to me. On some level it does. And I think that the people that are able to be very successful at any given thing are aware of this thing on some level. You have to be because the power of what you put in your mouth, what you don't put in your mouth, it's not the food that's your enemy. You know, oh, I just love cake and cake just messes me up. I can't stay on my diet because cake Cake doesn't care about you. Cake is not even a living entity. You can give it power. You can give it physical characteristics. You can give it, you can magnify cake and create an enemy, create a personality and give it to it. But all of those things are done by you and the power of your mind to do it. There was actually this quote that I stumbled upon that you know really defined my dream, which was, we're all, we're not human beings trying to live a, you know, spiritual life, but we're spiritual beings trying to live a human life. For bodybuilding, I realize it's an art, you know, um, I'm a sculptor. Uh, the, the weights are my sculpting tools where I can, you know, trim down what I want to sculpt my, sculpt the areas that I want to, and then with the nutrition and rest and proper sleep, uh, that's my clay where I mold it. And then when I'm on stepping up on stage, that's my masterpiece. And you know, to me, it's like, if you write a book, why not publish it? <laughs> the best of the best through, through the continuum of our sports history have all understood that and were able to even express that very, very, very clearly. So the, way, the fact that you have said that and the fact that you understand that is brilliant. And I believe that that is the foundation on which you can build your larger success. Um, so you're off to a really good start. So we're gonna get off here. That is what's up. Everybody has faith though. Whether it's yeah. for you or against you, everyone has that faith. Whether they acknowledge it or not, it's something else. Basically we're gonna do like seven abdominal exercises, I do them like clockwork. And I always encourage everyone that I ever get a chance to work with, when I share with them what I do, I always encourage them to at least be aware of this and however you modify it or, or even choose to, if you choose to use it at all, um, I believe it's been a help to me and I expect that if you, it may be of some service to you. So you wanna get started? Okay, very simply, what I do is I take my finger, my two fingers, I create a place to rest. This muscle here in the front of your neck, you got the two of them, they're called your sternocleidomacidoides. No need to think about the highfalutin name, but very simply, I, wanna, I don't want it to work while I'm working my abdominals. I want to take my abs, I want to go from, this, from the fifth and across the cartilage down the pubic, pelvic symphysis, and I just want to create the absence of distance. I'm going to stretch and I'm going to contract. That contraction is my attempt to create an absence of distance between my pelvis and my trunk. By doing that, I activate my rectus, from, uh, my rectus abdominis and I begin my abdominal exercise. Does that make sense? Yep. Turn to the side, pelvis flat. 
these fingers, I'm gonna use this extra sensory. I'm gonna squeeze, I'm gonna stretch by creating space between my pelvis and my, my, my pelvis and my, my ribs, and I'm gonna contract, shortening that distance. I'm gonna stretch it again and contract. This should be a contraction. I wanna feel these. Go ahead, piano wire. There we go, good news, let's get it. We talked about the lower abdominal. We're gonna make a diamond with our hands. That hollowed out area is where we're gonna put our coxie bone. <clears throat> Point those feet straight up and up. But now what we're gonna do though, at the top of this movement, you contract your rectus abdominis. This way, what we're trying to do is contract it all from the bottom to the top. Lower to the bottom, just an inch above the floor, back up to the top. But now think about this. See this extra? This is a contraction on the top of your rectus abdominis. So what's happening is we're keeping that contraction while adding the lower part. Does that make sense? Let's get it. Don't kick your feet. 11, 12, use your abdominal. Left elbow, right knee. Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take this elbow, I'm gonna use it to stretch my body across. Now I'm imagining an energy line reaching from my right toe all the way out, out to the left, out of my elbow. And I'm gonna squeeze, one. Yeah, that's perfect, two. Three. Breathe, Mr. Wong. You gotta breathe. So this is, believe it or not, it's a great place to find connections, even with my glutes. So I relax, I relax my, my lower back a little bit, even though it's in a flexed position, and I flex my right and left glute. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Both. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to contract and release my spinal erectors and my glutes. One, two, three, four, twenty. Now, on plank hold, you see people doing these all over the world now. Everybody does plank hold. They just, uh, they just speak to core, back, better promotion of flexibility and core strength throughout, which touches everything and every functionality, every sport, every discipline, even dancers, ballerinas, Everybody included. All right. Now when I'm here, I just try to open up my lower back. I just simply imagine a straight line. I over that line and open up my, my shoulder, my lats. I'm even able to flex my glute when I saw it. While doing that, same thing. Other side. Cat camel. I got these from Mike, Dr. Mike Camp. 
two, three. I'm flexing my abdominals off. Get it. Man, this is this is just a great movement for me. Because I can feel it open up my lower back and so my lower back starting to open up just a little bit. But also by trying to promote right angles with my front leg, I think about the right angle with my back knee, but also in this position I'm able to make connections with my glutes and my hamstrings in ways that over time, it allowed me to make better connections with these, with these areas, and it allowed me to move more efficiently when performing other exercises. So I was able to maximize the benefit from some of the even more fundamental exercises that I thought I already understood, like the basic mechanics related to my squatting, the basic mechanics relating to my deadlifting, the basic mechanics that related to all these other movements that could have been trouble spots for my lower back. So this, ex this, this stretch actually helped me make connections in a very um, safe way of getting, because I, I don't have to worry about falling over because I'm, I'm pretty much well balanced and I'm, I'm supported, able to be supported on either side. But with that leg back and able to get it back as far as I can, now I can actually stretch to Rekus Morris on the back leg. I'm able to flex my glute because primarily that's, what your glutes are responsible for, you know? So in this position, oh yeah, I'm able to flex my glute more effective, more efficiently, which makes me more aware of it, which allows me to become more efficient a mover in other exercises. Does that make any sense? All right, so cool, here. I just put here, I always hold for eight. Then drop it to, go on to a split. Sit up, hold for eight, and then I drop. Hold for eight, and then I drop. Now there's certain times in the year when I'm not able to get this at all. <laughs> but today happens to be a very good day. Uh, so I usually hold this for about eight. Other side. So again, when on that back leg, I'm able to flex these glutes. Flex my glute, flex my glute, flex my glute. Now somebody doesn't know, and they see you stretching by yourself, they might think you're trying to entice somebody. But this is not about that at all. What this is, though, is about going into yourself and trying to take command of your instrument, take an inventory of your instrument. And now, as you relate these things to your training, to what you want to do, you're able to think about, OK, because being able to flex your glutes, flex your hamstrings and be able to flex them more efficiently, that is how you end up becoming, in my game, more lethal with more things to show as they turn you around, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, as a bodybuilder. Um, so these are some things that ended up just kind of, I think are part of the natural progression of my development as an athlete and trying to become the better athlete that I believe I can be. So answering that question of who am I or what is my goal at this time? You know, um, am I training just to train? Am I training just to move weight? Am I training because I like exercising? or am I training with a more specific goal in mind? I want to become a better competitor. I want, to be, I want to be a better creator. I want to turn around and show more development. This is the road that I believe that I've been on that helped me to start to develop these little fine point nuances in my training approach. Okay, so from here, where are we at? Are we did this, 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 this. Okay, yeah, that's right. So. That's why I think it's very important to, you know, one of the most important characteristics is just to be yourself. And that's when it's really important to be humble because it, it, when you're humble, it doesn't matter about the praises or what other people's opinions are because you are who you are. And when you think about that, then you're, you're just doing the things that you know, you're supposed to do. That's what's up. I like praising though. I like <laughs> I mean, it praise good. Yeah. Too. <laughs> Old. But I understand you. Yeah, but it just doesn't become as important. That's not the most important thing. Like, of course it feels good, you know, like, but. Well, you know, it's important that you say this because at the same time too, 
I had to learn very different, very different that it, what's more important is not the praise, because in truth, what happens when they're not saying exactly. anything? Or what's happening when what they say isn't favorable? Yeah. It doesn't support, you know, the larger vision of who you aspire to be or even what you want to be seen as. You need to be able to silence those voices and listen and make the voice that is in you, that spirit, that thing that, as you said, God laid on your heart, your spirit, that voice that says, I believe, that voice that says, I believe in what I'm doing. I believe this is good. I believe that I will be advanced as a result of doing this. I believe that it represents the larger good that I want to be a part of. And listen to that louder than the voices that are outside. And it's, you're very, very true when you say that. Very, very, very accurate. That is a, there's a strong wisdom in that. Okay, bang, bang, bang. All right, up to the top here. There you go. And then basically what I do is I try to let my my head and my elbows stretch out my lower back just a little bit by flexing my hamstring i'm able to take an inventory of what's going on what am i feeling over there that's what i believe a contraction allows me to do in any part of my body when i'm when i'm when i'm actually working on it it allows my mind to become clearer and focus in on that area all right back to the center Bring in that left leg. Try to keep both heels on the ground. Both feet, both heels on the ground. I'm working through my gracilis, my hamstring, my, my uh, adductor muscles that sit on the inside of my femur. Walk it over, same thing. sit up so by pulling my pelvis underneath me underneath my chest this is how I learned how to squat but I learned that by doing this I've also called my glutes to contract very intensely that becomes a driver to help me protect my back not only when I'm squatting or when I'm deadlifting but also when I'm walking um, this in itself starts to speak about flexibility larger flexibility in my hips very, very important when I start talking about leg development and being able to achieve some of those positions to contract my muscles while on the floor training. Does that make any sense? So, up to the top. Out. All right. 